So last lecture we looked at uh, linear quadratic optimal control which actually forms the basis of uh, model predictive control. So in this lecture I want to complete some part of this quadratic optimal control and then move on to the main uh, control scheme that I want to talk about is model predictive control. So hopefully uh, we will be able to do it by end of this week that is the next lecture. Uh, so I talked about uh, linear quadratic optimal control mainly because it forms the background for uh, model predictive control. What is model predictive control? We will we'll see that how uh, in terms of concepts, there is a smooth transition from one idea to the other idea. Uh, many of the books do not introduce it this way, many of the books choose to introduce it model predictive control uh, not connected with LQG uh, because the way it developed in the industry was not exactly the way I am presenting it. Okay. So if you take a historical viewpoint, uh, then uh, connections between LQG and predictive control were established uh, somewhat later in the literature, but uh, the connections always existed, it is not that they were not there, they were not so apparent in the initial works that appeared. Anyway, so let us start looking at this uh, LQ controller, linear quadratic controller. Now I added one more term here, linear quadratic Gaussian regulator. Uh, initially I developed controller only for a system in which there were no disturbances, no state disturbances, no unmeasured, uh, no measurement noise, it was a clean system. Most ideal case, we looked at a problem where it is perturbed from origin and you want to bring the system back to the origin. This was a limited problem, very, very simplified problem that we looked at. Uh, actually what you do in reality, there are state disturbances, even if you relax. Uh, these two small constraints that is or conditions that is there are no state disturbances and there is no measurement noise, then we have to make some modifications. Now moment you have this kind of a model, okay, moment you have this kind of a model in which you do not neglect, you do not neglect the state disturbance nor you neglect the measurement noise and you let us say you have characterization of these two signals, this is 0 mean white noise, this is again 0 mean white noise, you know covariances, okay. Then how do you implement the controller? Well, the way you implement the controller is not using the actual state feedback, but using the output feedback. What you do is you construct a state estimator, here I have constructed predictor, okay, just to keep my development simple. It is possible to do same thing using Kalman filter, okay. I could have done everything using Kalman filter. I am just choosing to develop entire nodes using Kalman predictor. That is only to keep mathematics or algebra simple, okay. It has nothing to do with, uh, uh, you know, that this is the observer, nothing like that. You can develop uh, this controller using uh, Kalman filter as well, okay. In Kalman filter, I have to write one more equation, okay, prediction correction. Here I have one equation. So my subsequent algebra becomes simple. Apart from that, there is in, in the development. Once you understand the concept, extending it to from Kalman predictor to Kalman filter is a minor modification. So it is not a great, uh, great thing, okay. But if you see here, uh, what I got, what I got for linear quadratic optimal control were Riccati equations. Uh, then I was not interested in the dynamic Riccati equations, I was interested in the steady state Riccati equations. Through steady state Riccati equation, I got the gain matrix, right. I got this G infinity matrix, this is my controller gain, okay. And what is this L star here? Is the observer gain. How do you get the observer gain? You have method of designing the observer through. Kalman's approach that is Kalman predictor 
you have Riccati equations for observer. Okay, so actually, actually, you have to solve when you design this feedback controller. You have to solve two sets of Riccati equations: one for observer, the other one for controller. Okay, one for observer, other one for controller. One to obtain L infinity. One to obtain L infinity, other is to obtain G infinity. Okay, when you are doing your assignment now, okay, I am expecting you to implement this control law. This control law. I am not expecting you to right now to implement observer which is time varying, time varying gain. Forget about time varying gain. You can directly get steady state solution of the Riccati equations both for the controller and the observer. Just find out L infinity, G infinity. Okay, implement the control law like this. That's what I am expecting. How do you solve the algebraic Riccati equations? Okay, that's a complex business. Okay, you leave it to MATLAB. There is a subroutine in MATLAB called ARE. Is it for discrete time? Is it DARE? Yeah, for discrete time, it is DARE. Discrete algebraic Riccati equations. That will solve. That will give you the controller settings, controller uh, matrix. Okay, the, for for Kalman filter, there is a subroutine called D Kalman. Okay, you just give system matrices to D Kalman. Okay, it will find these gains for you. It will it will give you both. D Kalman will give you predictor gain. D Kalman will give you filter gain. You have to choose. Whichever one you want to implement, you have to choose either filter gain or predictor gain, and implement the control law. Okay, just pick up the steady state gain and implement it. Okay, that is when it comes to closed loop control. When it comes to state estimation, and when you are doing Kalman filter, okay, at that point you write the Riccati equation. See how the P K changes as a function of time. How L K changes as a function of time. After some time, L K will go to L K star. Or L star, okay. So that will happen. So that you can see there. So these two are different exercises. I will upload today detailed uh, instructions on how to submit uh, this uh, assignment. Okay. So as I said, I want to include one more uh, thing in in this. So the three easy components of this assignment is one is system identification, then observer programming, and then uh, you know this LQ controller, linear quadratic optimal control. So these three uh, you do, and then the fourth one is you implement model predictive control. Okay, that's what I'm expecting. So that is that will have higher weightage than these three. So suppose you put 25 marks. So first three is 555, and uh, MPC is about 10 marks. Okay, so do predictive control, implement it. That is that is the main thing. Okay, so this is this idea clear? What is happening here? So right now again we are looking at a very limited problem. We are looking at a problem of moving system from Somewhere to origin. Okay, what about the stability? Okay, you can show that uh, you can construct the the way we constructed the closed loop equation last time. Okay, uh, for the Leeuwenberg observer, in the same way you can construct the closed loop equation here. You have this is the true evolution uh, evolution of the plant. This is the error estimation error. Okay, you get the same thing here. There is one Technical problem in directly applying uh, stability condition to this equation is because uh, is because this now we have included this W K and V K. Okay, now the trouble with W K and V K is that because we have made an assumption that these are Gaussian. Okay, they have Gaussian distributions. A Gaussian signal uh, is a is a Is an idealization. It's, it's, see, Gaussian distribution is defined for, for in uh, say, if you take some random variable x, okay. Gaussian distribution is defined for x going from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. Now, the Gaussian distribution will make sure that large values never occur. They have very very low probability. Nevertheless, okay. You have defined a domain which is minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. Now, once you have done that, 
uh, this system has inputs technically which are unbounded technically in reality disturbances are not going to be unbounded in reality wk state noise and measurement noise is going to be bounded it's never going to be unbounded model used for it is saying that it is unbounded okay that creates some technical difficulty in talking about bounded input bounded output stability because these inputs as we have defined right now that is gaussian distributions are not bounded inputs so there is a technical difficulty if you if you view this equation as a deterministic equation where w and v are some deterministic inputs to this difference equation which are bounded you make that approximation then you can talk about bounded input bounded output stability by looking at the eigen values of this matrix see this is the augmented state vector okay this is the and this is the matrix whose characteristic equation will determine whether the system is closed loop stable now this argument we have done in the case of earlier for the state feedback control law yeah no 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 so when you define see how is a gaussian distribution defined otherwise what you have to do is you have to define something called truncated gaussian distribution okay so which means that w can take let's take a scalar case yeah so x can can see if you take a if you take a gaussian distribution of a random variable x okay it is defined from x going from minus infinity to plus infinity it is not it is if you if you want to take a you cannot define a gaussian distribution for a bounded x if you want to define a gaussian distribution for a bounded x then there is something called truncated gaussian distribution which means let's say x varies between plus or minus 3 suppose okay you want to say that then the distribution is no longer gaussian it can it is almost gaussian with truncation yeah yeah, yeah but it's an input no to the system it's an input to the system so is it is it a is it a is it a input find on the bounded domain it is not moment you say it's a gaussian random variable okay it is not a input defined on the bounded domain that is a technical difficulty okay if you ask me whether so actually speaking actually speaking creating a model for a real world problem in which an input tag can take unbounded values is not realistic but it is mathematically convenient why we do it is because it is you know mathematically much more convenient if i were to work with those truncated distributions the life will become mess i mean the algebra will become quite messy and you cannot get nice okay so uh, technically it is an unbounded uh, unbounded defined on the unbounded domain though in reality no such thing as unbounded the input exists right so so basically we have seen through lyapunov argument that phi minus gamma g infinity this is inside the unit circle and phi minus lc infinity this is inside the unit circle independently observer and the controller are stable then you can just combine them the combined system will be closed loop stable this is what this roughly is the idea behind the separation principle you can separately design observer you can separately design the controller under the nominal case they will be jointly stable they will give you a system which is jointly stable okay so this uh, let's move, move on to a more realistic formulation yeah 38 i can use a kalman filter here also okay so i am using kalman predictor here just to keep my algebra simple i because this this whole thing becomes easier to develop it's not that i cannot do it with kalman filter i can do a whole thing with kalman filter i can use why i am using yk minus 1 here huh hmm. oh sorry it should be k minus here this one right thanks yeah it should not be k given k, k. it should be k given k minus it should be k given k minus correct okay it should be k given k minus okay so the first thing is 
that we have made an, a simplifying assumption that the disturbances in the state okay are white noise it's a very very uh, you know simplistic uh, assumption okay there could be disturbances which are influencing the state dynamics that are colored or drifting okay assuming that they are white noise is a simplification that helped us to do some mathematics okay now let's go to the real problem that it is in reality it is not a white noise okay it could be colored okay now how to deal with this problem we'll see that second second thing is that when i did all these derivations okay uh, i made an assumption that phi and gamma and c matrix which are used for the plant and which are used in the model are identical okay this is also okay this is also just a, a simplifying assumption to you know uh, get some insights into uh, ideal behavior but in reality yeah yeah before this we want to ha so i am going to do that so right now i am just in this particular controller i am bringing it from a non zero initial condition to zero initial condition to zero state from non zero initial state to final finally i want to control at zero zero this particular regulator when you say regulator you are only regulating at zero zero this uk is equal to g infinity will only ensure that x xk will go to zero 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 as time as k goes to infinity i am just going to origin right now okay so i have designed a controller to move a system to origin from a state which is not at the origin okay now i want to use this controller see why why i did all this because i wanted to derive all these ricard equations i wanted to derive all these ricard equations i want to derive ricard equations that's why i have done this simplification and now i know how to compute g infinity okay right right now i know how to compute using this ricard equations i am going to form this algebraic ricard equations i am going to estimate g infinity okay and instead of implementing controller like this because i do not have true state measurement okay i am going to construct an observer see since i cannot implement the controller using the true state measurement because they are not available i am going to construct an observer here and using the estimated state i am going to implement the control law what is this control law going to achieve move the system from at time 0 the state is not at 0 0 it will move to 0 0 this is a very very limited problem okay now i want to make it into a realistic problem of moving the system from anywhere to anywhere okay how do i modify this control law okay so that i move from anywhere to anywhere is that what you want to ask ha huh. this this is achieving a limited objective moving from anywhere to 0 0 okay so now how do i change this and right now i have said that under ideal conditions okay the observer and the controller together will give you a stable closed loop behavior so it's fine if you implement the control law using estimated state instead of the true states okay so observer controller is a is a thing which is sort of married together you cannot implement a state feedback control law without an observer you have to have an observer observer will give you state estimates or a soft sensor will give you estimate of the unmeasured states using those states you implement a control law okay so other thing is that there can be mismatch between the model and the plant if there is a mismatch between the model and the plant then this control law may not take you to the desired uh, desired location zero zero that is on the problem so we have to add some kind of integral action what is done if what will happen is if you if you do not if you just use this control law blindly okay when there is a model plant mismatch or there is a disturbance you will get an offset you will not the system will not move to zero zero it will settle at some other point okay so now what is done in pid controller you all all of you know that if you just have proportional controller okay then what happens is that you can get offset 
okay so you need to introduce some way of integral action into this system okay now there are several ways of introducing integral action into the system i am going to talk of two different ways uh, of which i'll emphasize one and the second one uh, also i'll talk about but uh, uh, so uh, what if i want to what i what if i want to move the system to some non zero initial state what if if i want to move the system to some set point okay which which i have specified i want to move the system to a given set point okay not not to zero zero see uh, you take this quadruple tank setup in quadruple tank setup when you have put up the system and develop the state space model zero zero means the initial steady state okay now what if i want to change the level set points i don't want to keep system only at the initial steady state all the time i want to move to some other set, set points okay so that is a possibility second thing is uh you know my model and a plant need not be identical you know that real system is non linear you are identifying the linear state space model there is a approximation so model and the plant are not exact so that is going to create some problems the third problem is that there could be drifting disturbances which i have not accounted for when i modeled okay so all these three things are going to create a problem so i am going to modify now my control law using these two additional terms here okay this xs is a steady state target okay xs is a steady state target and us is the steady state input now what is this i am modifying this control law if you if you if you see here if you see this i am trying to keep the form of the control law same state feedback except i am trying to apply some corrections here okay to the input and to the state okay these corrections how do i compute these corrections we'll come to that okay how do i compute this um, but finally a realistic lq controller which i am going to implement is going to be uk is equal to usk minus i have removed here g infinity this is g infinity instead of writing g infinity every time i have just written g here x minus xs okay now the question is how do i find out us and xs okay such that i reach the desired set point arbitrary set point i reject all the disturbances okay my controller will work even if there is a model plant mismatch okay this is my target now so now i am moving from a unrealistic but mathematically convenient formulation to a realistic formulation okay where i am going to use the results of my previous part where my results of previous parts are going to come g infinity okay i am going to compute g infinity using algebraic riccati equations those i have sorted out earlier okay now i know how to compute gain now given this gain i want to only sort out the problem of okay non zero initial state or non zero final state non zero final state uh, disturbances okay model plant mismatch all these issues i want to sort out now okay so these are called as target states okay okay now let's move a little bit to uh, this just uh, look at this equation this is my model okay this is my model right now don't worry about observer controller all that this is a model okay now when you say that your final steady state let's call the final steady state in for the time being as x uh, okay let's use the same terminology xs xs if xs is equal to 0 0 vector what will be y ys cxs that is equal to zero vector dimensions will be different this will be n cross 
this will be r r cross 1 there are r outputs there are n states okay so the dimensions of these two vectors will be different but these are two zero vectors okay now so which means which means what is the final set point here output set point zero when you say that i want to reach the target state of 0 0 the final state is zero okay now just keep this aside so this is the file now let's say let's say i want to reach i want to reach a set point okay which is given by r okay so this is my this is my in this particular case so when when you say that case xs is equal to 0 ys is equal to 0 so r is equal to r is equal to 0 so this is my so r also becomes equal to 0 vector so r is the set point okay what if i want to reach a set point which is non zero okay i want to reach a set point which is non zero so let r be not equal to zero now this is my set point okay now what i am going to do i am going to find out the value of the steady state okay i am going to find out value of the steady state xs okay which corresponds to r which is not equal to 0 okay r is some suppose you know we take this uh, uh, our level pole time problem and then r you have given as you know uh, 4 centimeters and minus 3 centimeters i want to reach these are deviation variables these are deviation variables with reference to the initial state i want to go to plus 4 and minus 3 okay in tank 1 and tank 2 i want to raise the level of tank 1 i want to reduce the level of tank 2 okay so this is my r so what is the steady state what is the steady state that will give me this r can i find this out i can find this out because i have this model so what is the steady state let me call this as xs is equal to phi xs plus gamma us i still do not know what is this xs and us i have to find out okay and r equal to c xs where i want to reach i want to reach y is equal to r okay so i want to reach y equal to r equal to this okay r is given to me r is this okay how can i find out xs from these two equations can i find out so from this equation from this equation i know that i minus phi into xs is equal to gamma us okay so xs is equal to i minus phi inverse gamma into us okay if i substitute this here i will get an equation r is equal to c into i minus phi inverse into gamma us correct is it is it okay everyone with me on this okay so what should be us what should be us okay what should be us which will give me this r if this matrix is a square matrix if the number of inputs is equal to number of set points if this matrix is a square matrix then number of measurements is equal to it will happen when number of inputs is equal to number of outputs see in the quadruple tank setup okay you have two measurements level 1 level 2 you have two inputs two wall positions okay this matrix actually this will be steady state gain matrix if you look carefully this is a steady state gain matrix okay this matrix let me call this matrix as ku okay then us is equal to ku inverse into r is everyone with me on this us is equal to ku inverse into r right 
if u s is equal to k u inverse into r, you substitute this here, you will get x l. Okay. See what I have done is that I found out this. Now this I substituted here. Then from this equation, I got u s, and if I substitute u s, I'll get. Is is this clear? Is the sequence clear? Just try to derive it yourself. It's very simple. Okay. I am given. See. Uh, I am given a set point. For the given set point, I want to find out the steady state, corresponding steady state. I have model equations. Using the model equations, I can actually find this particular steady state. I can actually find this steady state. Okay. Is this clear? Let's not bother about it right now. You understand this simplified thing. If it is not a square matrix, you can use a pseudo inverse. Okay, you can use appropriate pseudo inverse. Okay. Right now, take the simplified case. It is square matrix. If it is not a square matrix, you can use pseudo inverse of this case gain matrix. Huh? It is not always square, but uh, like we. Initially, made a lot of assumptions. Right now, make an assumption that it is square. Okay. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to control the system, okay, you have a situation. If you want to control the system at a at a specified set points, then what is the condition? How many inputs should be there? And how many? If you have some, if you have say two outputs, you have to have minimum two inputs. You can have more than two inputs. Okay, so it can be square in the sense that the number of inputs have always should be always be equal to or more than the number of outputs. If they are not, then you cannot solve this problem. Okay, so if they are not equal or if they are not more than the number of outputs, then you cannot reach the desired set point. This is a fundamental. See, what if the number of just look at this algebraic equation. If the number of inputs are less than the number of outputs. Can you uniquely define the inputs which will take the system to the desired outputs? The input space is smaller than the output space. Then, can you take system from anywhere to anywhere? Just linear algebra problem. When can you uniquely solve this? Ask this question. See, I'll put it in an abstract form. If I have a x equal to b, okay. When can you have A unique solution. See, this problem is not different. K K U into U S is equal to R. These two problems are same. Map them and then see. If 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 the dimension of R, okay, is larger than dimension of U S, okay, you cannot take system from. You cannot manipulate input to take it. From any set point to any set point, the dimension of R, so dimension of R, R should be less than or equal to dimension of U S. Okay, so if if that is the case, I can always take a situation where this is equal. No, I may not want to manipulate more inputs. I want to manipulate equal to the number of. Which are controllable. Uh, they may not be reachable. Controllable. They might be controllable to zero zero zero, but they may not be reachable. Reachability is a stronger condition. So, uh, if you have example, you show me. We can look at it. So, underdetermined system. There is always a problem. Okay. So, we are talking of well-conditioned problem where system is you know number of inputs are more than the number of outputs, and then. We are able to take the system from anywhere to anywhere. That's where. I'm. So, if you have a situation where the dimension of U S is long, larger than the dimension of R, you can use pseudo inverse and work with the problem. So, you get one solution. Okay. Okay. Let's go back here. So, how do I get this X S and U S knowing R is clear from here? At least for the ideal case, where number of inputs 
is equal to number of set points or number of outputs okay see what i am trying to do here is something like this continue on this page okay so you have found out you have this system x k plus 1 is equal to phi x k plus gamma u k and y k is equal to c x k okay and i have this another i have this steady state equation x s is equal to phi x s plus gamma u s r is equal to c x s right i know how to find out x s and u s now given r okay so all that i am going to do is to subtract equation 1 and equation 2 and equation equation 3 and equation 4 i'm going to subtract this and this and this from this okay if i subtract what i'll get is right right is this okay okay and yk minus r is equal to c xk minus xs everyone with me on this what what do you what do you consider i'll consider here you want to consider everything in one shot is not possible see we develop things in pieces and the entire thing will become clear only after you uh, you know don't jump okay just be patient we'll consider noise we'll consider all kinds of noise okay i have to explain the concept by removing certain complications then you know see i can show you the final expression which looks very complex okay so to explain that i am removing certain you know things and then is zero mean going to noise going to change excess you tell me if there is a zero mean noise is it going to change excess no there is a non zero mean noise excess is going to change how to deal with it i am coming to that okay just wait just have some patience okay so now this is this is this can be this equation you know i can write as delta x k plus 1 is equal to phi delta x k plus gamma delta uk and delta yk is equal to c delta xk is this fine now this is a perturbation model perturbation around perturbation developed around this steady state okay this steady state will take me to the set point r okay so the trick we do the trick we do is to design a lq controller for this perturb system okay what is the origin of this perturb system xs okay see origin of this perturb system is when you reach 0 0 where you do reach xs what do you mean by reaching xs reaching excess means you are reaching set point r okay so this is a trick i am going to do to use the same old control law in the new context i want to reach a set point which is non zero okay i found out a steady state corresponding to that non zero set point i subtracted created a new system which is which is this perturbation system okay for this perturbation system i design a control law that is delta xk
minus g delta u k which is nothing but x k is equal to x s minus g u k minus u s. You see what I am doing? I am just rewriting this back into the original form. Okay, I am rewriting this back into the original form. So, so do you see this now? What is the reason why I am doing this? Yeah. So, the reason why I am modifying this control law, okay, is to find out that steady state which will take me to the desired, desired location. Okay. So, I am going to talk about two approaches of dealing with model plant mismatch, noise, colored noise and uh, all kinds of disturbances that can occur. The first approach is, uh, I am going to talk about the implementation right now, you will get more and more understanding about this as you uh, actually work with it. Okay. So, my observer is based on this. Okay. Um, when the model is perfect, what we know is that E k is a zero mean signal, it is like a you know uncorrelated white noise sequence, uh, it is a perfect uh, white noise signal. Movement, there is a mismatch between the plant and the model. Movement, it happens that the true plant evolves according to some phi bar, gamma bar, c bar which are different from phi gamma c. Okay. This E k here this E k here is no longer a white noise sequence, okay, is no longer a white noise sequence. So, this can happen under two situations, one is that this phi bar, gamma bar and c bar are different from phi gamma c, it can happen when your model, the true plant evolves let us say according to this, there is another term here, okay, this is a drifting disturbance this is a drifting disturbance which you have not accounted for in your model when you developed the Kalman filter, you never knew about this. Okay. So, you have not accounted for this guy here D, but in the plant it is there. Okay. When these two things happen, what will happen is that the innovation sequence is no longer a white noise. Okay. This innovation sequence becomes a colored noise, I am skipping the proof, if you want I can give you some of the uh, reading material on this that why it becomes a colored noise, but right now trust me that it becomes a colored noise. So, what is the meaning of it becoming a colored noise? If there was no plant model mismatch, okay, there was no plant model mismatch, then E k would be something uh, you know, this is my E k, E k would be something like 0 mean, see this is 0. Oh. Okay. So, E k will be something like E k will be something like this, but moment there is a model plan mismatch, this E k will be a drifting signal. Okay. E k can be a drifting signal, which is there is a time correlation between between k and k minus 1 k and k minus 5, you take any difference there will be time correlation. It is no longer a zero mean signal. Okay. This is a zero mean signal means actually if you take a moving average, it will come out close to zero. Okay. Here it will not come out close to zero. Here you will see that there is a trend. Okay. Now, one can of course do modeling of this online uh, using all the time series methods that we have studied. I am not going to get into that right now. I am going to have a simplified uh, you know fix to deal with this particular problem that it becomes colored. Okay. What I am going to do is I am going to find out what is the drifting mean of this signal. Okay. What is the mean of this signal which means I am right now interested in finding out if this is changing like this, I am just I am just in interested in knocking off this high frequency noise, I want to find out this, this trend, I want to find out this dominant 
low frequency trend i want to find out this dominant low frequency trend okay and then i am going to take this dominant low frequency trend as an indicator of unmeasured disturbances okay if unmeasured disturbances were not there ek will be like this if it is there it will be some drift what is that drift how do i get that drift from the data of ek which is coming okay so what i am going to do here for that is i am going to filter i am going to filter this signal okay this is a first order difference equation what does a filter do what is a filter it filters certain frequencies and it gives you a signal of lower frequencies okay filter is well well when i use the word filter okay particularly all those chemical engineers will start thinking in terms of some thing in you know electro electronics or electrical engineering domain and we don't know what is this it's not like that filter is anything that filters high frequency signal in chemical engineering uh you know if i have a flow and if i want to remove high frequency oscillations from the flow what i will do is i'll put a tank in between okay and the flow comes into the tank and the outflow of the tank is given to the reactor i have put a filter in between to filter out the high frequency noise okay the level in the tank will fluctuate but the flow out will not fluctuate depending upon how broad or how small the tank is you will be filtering different uh, frequencies in the flow signal okay so a filter essentially when it comes to computer programming a filter is nothing but a differential equation or a difference equation a difference equation is a filter okay a difference equation will filter uh, input given to the difference equation the output of the difference equation will be a filtered output okay so what will decide the filtering uh, ability the time constant okay the time constant what is in the case of discrete time where does the time constant this is come into picture sampling time and phi eigen values of eigen values of phi okay so i am going to specify this phi i am going to specify this phi matrix okay i should it should be stable filter of course so uh i have to choose this phi matrix okay whose i am going to choose this phi matrix to be a diagonal matrix okay uh alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 alpha r so i am going to filter this using uh, a signal which is uh you know uh this is a simple first order filter with uh, 1 minus phi e this will make sure that the gain of the filter is unity how do you find out gain of the system the steady state gain what is the input to this this difference equation what is the input e is the input e is the input okay e filtered is the e filtered is the output okay e filtered is the output e is the input okay and then this this particular difference equation will give me a filtered output maybe let's let's do uh, let's see whether in matlab i can show you this
Okay, so I have created a signal which is colored noise, which is uh, which has some kind of uh, this thing, and I'll just say plot this e k e. Okay, I think uh, let's do a little bit. Uh, let's let this signal dominate. I will reduce the Okay, so this is a drifting signal. Okay, now I want to uh, filter this signal. Okay, so uh, I'm going to write a difference equation and then filter this. Okay, so for i equal to one to say two hundred. Uh, okay, I cannot do this. I have to say E F E filtered. Uh, let us create a dummy vector initially E f is equal to 0 s 200,1 and now for i is equal to 1 to 200. E filtered k is equal to, oh sorry, E filtered i is equal to, let us take filtering constant to be point, say point 8, okay. Point 8, I want to create a unity gain filter. So, this is, if this is point 8, see, this is filtering is star E f uh, i plus 1 is equal to E f i uh, plus, see this is this is the last filtered value, new filtered value is 0.8 times the last filtered value, okay, plus 1 minus 0 0.8, this will make sure that the gain is unity, okay, star uh, E k, E i. Okay, so this E f is a filtered signal. Now let us, we have this signal here, let us say hold on, and I will say plot E f on the same graph. You see here, this is a time shift, this is my filtered signal. This is my filtered signal. This is my original signal. What has happened when I moved from filter? There is a there is a shift this like this. That is okay. That is fine. Okay. What about smoothing? If I were to if I were to see there is one time shift. I should actually account for that, but that I have not done here right now. I can I can do that. But what has happened here? Is this a smooth signal? This is a smooth signal as compared to the. So what has happened when I moved from here to here? the high frequency component has been knocked off. Have I somehow, see it is time shifted, but have I recovered changing mean? Have I recovered changing mean? See suppose I were to superimpose, suppose I were to superimpose this on this, what will happen? The high frequency is knocked off, the low frequency drift is captured, okay. See you can make it even, even, even less oscillatory by changing this. See, instead of 0.8, I can have this as 0 0.9 or make it 0 0.95, this 0 0.95 and this is 0 0.95, 0 
okay I have, I have to make this I have to make this I have to make this equal to 1 minus 0.95 so that the gain of the filter is unity steady state gain of the filter is unity my I do not want to change the gain of the signal I just want to knock off high frequency component okay and let me say again plot uh, EF and then I say red color so I will see this well when I increased it there is a trouble it reduced it is not able to it is not able to capture the full height okay but the smoothness what about the smoothness the smoothness is there okay I could actually move other other direction So this is 0.6. See now, 0.6. This black one is 0.6. It has less oscillation, but it is trying to capture the. It is trying to capture the mean. Pretty well. It's trying to cap capture the mean pretty well as compared to 0.9, or this signal okay so there is a way of recovering drifting mean and knocking off high frequency signal just by doing simple unity gain filtering okay that's what i want to that's what i want to emphasize here is this is this clear from this picture what i am trying to do so this this parameter which i am talking about here this parameter which uh, so this this ef ef is the signal which is containing the drifting mean how, how do you choose this alpha is a golden question uh, it's a tuning parameter right now treated as a tuning parameter we have to choose it between say 0 0.6 and 0 0.9 uh, we have to tune it to see how the closed loop behaves okay typical value is 0 0.9 i would say but it depends upon uh, what is your frequency content and you have to have some experience on tuning this uh, so i can use this filtered signal okay and now i am going to so what does this filtered signal contain okay this filtered signal let's let's suppose that there is some optimal way of choosing this and knocking off the high frequency part high frequency part is like white noise low frequency part is like a drift okay what does this drifting signal contain it contains everything that is not explained by the model what is that model plant mismatch it may have drifting disturbances okay model plant mismatch drifting disturbances color disturbances non white disturbances everything is contained in this ek if if the model was perfect if the true plant noise was perfectly voiced then ek would be white noise but ek is not a white noise in reality ek is not a white noise if it is not a white noise we try to find out its mean okay this mean signal contains the information about model plant mismatch unmeasured disturbances everything that is not explained by my model okay fine so now uh, i am not making any when i move to this point i am not making any assumption on what kind of disturbances exist disturbances can be of any type okay colored uh, non stationary now what i do is my controller is now modified like this xs and us and then what i do is i solve for this equation now i am going to solve for this equation okay i am going to find out steady state excess okay i am going to find out steady state excess for the specified rk rk is my set point okay i am putting this r not as a constant earlier when i did the development i said there was a constant set point what if there is a set point trajectory okay so i am saying 
this to be RK. You know, uh, the set point is changing as a function of time. Now, what is this EF here? Is the filtered innovations? We created this filtered innovations here. If you remember, I have created this filtered innovations. Okay. This filtered innovations are used here in this equation. Okay. What is what is this component bringing in information? Unmeasured disturbances, unmodeled dynamics, everything is captured as an effect through this E filtered. Okay. This E filtered is changing as a function of time. That means I cannot talk of one steady state target. I cannot talk of one steady state target. Okay. I have to talk of time varying steady state target. Okay, see that's why I am doing this. So now I'm going to solve this equation, just like I solved the equation right now here. Okay, in the same way I did this. In the same way I did this here. In the same way we did it here, except now the signals are time varying. Okay, signals are time varying, which means. Now this R K here is not constant. R is not constant. I am looking at R K. Okay. I am also looking at a correction in the state. I am also looking at a correction in the output. This is coming through filtered innovations. Okay. Yeah. So here we are. So now I am going to solve for the steady state here. Okay. And then this will give me, of course, the way I solved earlier. I am going to solve for this. Okay. This will give me U steady state. Solving for this equation. And then substituting for excess, I will get x steady state. So this is a time varying excess U S which I get when I solve this. Okay, and uh, for the square systems, of course, when the system is square, you can write this as uh, K U inverse. Okay, when system is not square, you replace K U inverse by the pseudo inverse. Okay, the same thing will work. Okay, so this is my this is my These are my moving targets, okay. And this moving targets, I am going to, uh, and with this moving targets, I am going to implement this control law. Okay. Now this control law, this control law, this modified control law will take care of model plant mismatch, drifting disturbances, will take care of everything. Okay. Even though I have done development in bits and pieces. Initially, I assume that there are no disturbances. Okay, to most ideal case, I just use that situation to find out G. Once I know how to fix G, okay, I have a fix for unmeasured disturbances, model plant mismatch, all other things. Okay, that is through that is through this. Okay, so this is a this is a fix. This is a fix which will help you to deal with model plant mismatch, unmeasured disturbances. So actually, when I implement my control law, when you are going to do it in your in your uh, uh, project, okay, you are actually going to do this. You are going to do this filtering of innovations. You will write the observer. For the observer, you will take the innovations, filter them. From the filtered innovations, at every time instant, at every time instant, you are going to find out the new target state, and the control law is going to be this. Okay, this control law will take care of everything. Okay, this like control. I'll show you an example of how how this works. And when you actually implement, you will see how it works. Okay, now is this the only way of doing this? There are other ways of doing this. One is this is called as a state augmentation approach. What you can do is uh, I'm not going to get too much into details of this. Of this is a similar approach. What you do here is that you add extra states, beta and neta. You augment the system using uh, artificial extra states, okay? And these artificial extra states are treated. See, these are integrators. If you see here, these are pure integrators. So you add pure integrators into your system, model equations, arbitrarily, okay? And then you develop a controller for this augmented system. Okay, 
you develop a controller for this augmented system and you develop an observer using the augmented system you develop a controller using augmented system and then uh, you can take care of uh, so uh, these augmented white this white noise here and a white noise here these are treated as a uh, you know uh, tuning parameters and then one can uh, one has to find out the covariances one has to tune the covariance of, of this I particularly find the previous approach which I discussed this is a simpler approach just stick to this when you study for the first time okay when you become an advanced user if you want to switch to the other approach you can do that this is a easier approach to get rid of the uh, colored noise plant model mismatch moving to any set point everything can be achieved using this particular formulation same thing can be achieved through alternatively through what I have discussed here you can just go go through this I am not going to go uh, just see here what we have done there is a something like a state correction there is something like a output correction okay these are arbitrarily added augmented state vectors how to add these how to choose this gamma beta and c beta I have given some uh, some uh, some uh, guidelines here there are different ways of doing this there is something called output bias formulation there is something called input bias formulation so you can choose this drifting bias to be in the inputs you can choose it to be in the inputs you can choose it to be input and output and all kinds of combinations you can do uh, so let us not get into this you can choose it into the disturbance and uh, you can augment the state space model then you work with augmented state space model uh, and then develop your controller for the augmented system and uh, so I work with this augmented system okay I have given the methods of augmentation you work with the augmented controller augmented model develop a LQ controller artificial introduction of integrating states will remove this model plan mismatch will remove the offset sorry will remove the offset okay it will not remove the model plan mismatch because you are arbitrarily adding some integrators you are making some fixes in your model to make sure all this is just to make sure that there is no offset okay this is this is not this is not uh, this is a fix you should remember that this is a fix yeah so that is a good question so there is a fundamental limitation that you cannot add uh, you cannot add this last statement um, to maintain the observability of the additional states you cannot add more than number of outputs so if there are if there are 20 states and five outputs measurement measured outputs you can add at most five artificial variables okay so those could be out of that all five can be in the input all five can be in the output three in the input two in the output whatever you cannot add more than five this is a fundamental limitation as to okay actually the innovation bias approach which i talked about is also adding artificial variables it is not very clear here uh, you will have to work out some uh, little bit uh, of but it is exactly adding equal to number of outputs because innovations number of innovations is equal to number of outputs okay so that condition is perfectly satisfied there here uh, you have to make sure that you should not add more than otherwise you lose the observability then you cannot design an observer and then you get into trouble so so I will just show you an example here uh, well this is pretty much the same things you have to do when you do augmentation you have to find out the target state you modify the control law in the same way then you implement the control law in, there is no difference everything is same and then you know well I have mentioned this here that in case KU is not invertible you use uh, you know pseudo inverse so all that is I am just skipping through this because this is another approach you can stick to one of them for the completeness I have put the other approach in my notes okay so further if you go and if you were to use if you are not convinced with the innovation bias approach you can use the other one if you like it that way okay so what I have done here is I am going to compare I am going to show you that uh, uh, I am going to develop a control scheme for uh, uh, a CSTR the reactor problem which we have been looking at from for quite some time uh, I am going to measure only temperature estimate concentration and temperature using the state observer 
okay and then i'm going to develop multi loop control scheme two pi controllers and multi variable control scheme lqg okay um then i'm going to compare three controllers one is multi loop pi controller multi loop pi controller with decoupling okay and lqg controller okay and uh, my control problem is like this i want to give a step change in the concentration set point keep the temperature set point same i want to ramp up the concentration set point and then i want to introduce a unmeasured disturbance my controller should be able to reject the unmeasured disturbance move the system to the new set point okay all the three controllers are given same task and we will see how the closed loop performance is so this this is uh, i have done this using state augmentation approach i could have done it using input bias approach or the innovation bias approach uh, results will not be too different i have just shown here how to design the controller so i get here some control law which is uh, observer gain here i'll also get the controller gain by uh, the controller gain is found for the original system and the observer gain is found for the augmented system and then you uh, you know do the controller implementation through the augmented uh, state space model okay so uh, just just see here first time just showing with the observer initially i have just designed the observer okay observer is designed by doing the state augmentation i am assuming that there is a drifting disturbance in the unmeasured input dk okay and then i have augmented the state space model only temperature is measured only temperature is measured concentration is not measured this new augmented state okay which is introduced here that is also not measured okay so now just see here model no model plan mismatch that means plant is linear model is linear everything is perfect okay uh, i gave a step change in the inlet concentration as a disturbance my observer is able to track this my observer is able to track this i am not measuring inlet concentration my observer is able to track inlet concentration okay so i have a state estimator which estimates not only the mind you even the concentration is not measured only temperature is measured i am estimating the reactor concentration i am also estimating inlet concentration i am also estimating change in the inlet concentration through this augmentation okay to this augmentation i am also trying to track that so it's able to find out the change in the okay so it's like it's like through the model i have a disturbance observer okay if you the true disturbance is not measured but through the model i am constructing an estimate which is perfect quite quite okay okay if this disturbance estimate is quite okay i can do control which is speed forward control right i know i have a disturbance measurement now indirect but i have a disturbance measurement i can actually so my lq controller will get converted into a feed forward controller well i am just showing here what happens if the plant is non linear and observer is linear there is a slight mismatch okay but nevertheless it does capture the step change okay so the observer is bad now but it's okay it's it's giving you something is better than having no information about uh and then this mismatch will be taken care by the my lq controller i chose some wx matrix i have to choose a weighting matrix for state i have to choose a weighting matrix for input okay and then this g infinity is found using dlqr subroutine of the matlab you just give phi gamma matrix to dlqr you give this weighting matrices okay it will give you it will solve the riccati equation for you give you g infinity okay it will give you g infinity so this is this is your uh and then with this g infinity i have just shown you two different ways of uh, getting g infinity once this wx is 101 in other case see this in this case i have increased the weighting here see here it was 11 here i have made it 100 100 okay what will be the difference between this and this controller if the input weighting is more the movement of u will be smaller so the gain will be smaller okay this will be a sluggish controller 
this will be a sluggish controller this will be a more active controller that is reflected through the gain values here you can see this is minus 47 this is minus 1 okay so the values in the gain matrix are reduced what is this telling what is the first x variable concentration what is the second x variable temperature i am saying that change in the concentration value should be multiplied by 100 give more importance to perturbations in the concentrations than in the temperature okay so my controller will bother more about controlling the concentration than controlling the temperature okay so these values have to be used to fiddle with the performance you know which is what is more important what is less important you can tell you tell the controller through these values okay so just uh, this this will this figures i have shown you once uh, two controllers okay uh, two pid controllers which are not coordinated okay it's a disaster you can see it somehow takes it here okay it somehow rejects the disturbance okay but what is happening is you know the system is all over it's it's not a great uh, great control uh, mind you i am not doing anything here hanky panky i have chosen a controller pid design which is using the textbook methods i am just using them you know pole placement method or whatever i have used and i have not deliberately found a pi controller setting which will give me bad 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 results this is uh, by the design using the design approach okay now once i move to pid controller with gain decoupling okay does it help it does help okay you can see here that this performance at least visually is less oscillatory okay it is this is settling faster here see this is settling much faster whereas here it hasn't settled okay it is taking much much longer time to settle whereas with decoupling this seems to improve loop loop is better with decoupling than without decoupling okay everything is fine till i am using linear plant simulation okay <coughs> moment i move to non linear plant simulations okay this decoupling seems to go haywire okay so this decoupling seems to work when plant is linear model is linear everything is perfect i just keep the controller same just change plant simulation from linear to non linear plant simulation this decoupling doesn't seem to work okay so decoupling uh, is fine look at performance of lqg i mean just visually you can see what is the difference okay see see this performance and see this performance i just gave a step change the time by, by mind you this time 25 and this time 25 is same simulation for the same time okay here it took about 5 minutes to reach or 5 or 10 minutes to reach the set point okay look here i just gave a set point change as if you know there is no delay in the system it went to this new set point okay there was a small blip here okay the other loop is not affected there is no loops actually there are no two different loops there is nothing like two pid controllers fighting with each other in earlier case the two controller loops they were fighting with each other here nothing like that okay well you will say that well this is happening so nicely because the model plant mismatch is not there plant is linear model is linear everything is perfect lq controller you know you are finding out i just changed to non linear plant simulation not much difference not too much difference this has changed slightly okay this disturbance response has changed slightly but not much difference okay you are getting pretty much the same controller behavior as you got in the earlier case okay this is much more robust controller its performance is much better than the this is a multi variable controller it simultaneously changes both the inputs okay by using reconstructed states 
okay it does much much better job than two pid controllers acting independently even for a system there are where there are two loops imagine when you have a controller or when you have a system where are multiple such loops acting together that's why you need uh, multiple operators who are continuously watching the plant and you know it it becomes uh, a nightmare to run a big plant because there are so many loops all of them could be fighting or some of them could be helping you know it's a so so what is the problem what are the difficulties with lqg so lqg seems to be a good solution very nice why did why did people think of moving away from it what was the, what was required so i cannot i cannot impose constraints okay for example here if i wanted to say that you know the temperature should never cross 396 and actually it is crossing 396 here okay or it should never go below 390 okay can i say this in lqg controller i cannot because lqg controller is gain times x estimated you know if x estimated is large u will come out to be large it will can i say that u cannot be higher than something you cannot be lower than something all these constraints which are in real life there are constraints which i cannot specify to the lq controller because it just finds one gain multiplied by we have fixed to deal with offset removal but you know we don't have a way of dealing with constraints okay there is also some problem systematically dealing with model plant mismatch i won't go into it right now main difficulty is this if you have a large plant okay i am going to talk about a plant controlled by model predictive control which is as large as 600 outputs and 280 inputs simultaneously huge system okay for such a huge system solving algebraic riccati equations to get a gain matrix is a nightmare you cannot do it in a reliable manner it's very very difficult to solve algebraic riccati equations even for some of you when you will start using it for six cross six system you have a six state system you have difficulties so algebraic riccati equations can be solved for simple systems small problems it's fine no no difficulties when you move to large plants okay it's difficult to use ares so they form they give you a good theory it's everything is fine good understanding but you need something more than this okay that's where this model predictive control will come in it's a multi variable controller that uses online dynamic model this is one of the most widely used multi variable control schemes in the industry today it was developed the something that is different about this is that this particular control scheme emerged in the industry and then it moved into academics most other control schemes were first developed in the laboratories in universities and then you know they moved into the industrial practice this is something different this was developed by industrial practitioners and then people in the academic started doing their uh, you know uh, mathematics to show why it works okay <laughs> so uh, we'll talk about it in the ne next lecture so it's a very mature technology by now and then i'll talk about it more uh, and you can actually control very complex large dimensional systems using this approach okay so uh, with this i'll uh, close today's lecture